Zumda Shaw, Executive Chairperson Biocon and Biocon Biologics, Dr. Arun Chanda Worker, Managing Director, Srihas Dambe, Deputy CEO, and MB Chinappa, CFO of Biocon Biologics. Before we proceed, I would like to inform you that the conference is being recorded. All the media journalists will be on listen only mode. You'll be able to ask questions to the management only during the QA session. So without further ado, I would now request Kiran to address the media journalists. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Seema, and good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining me at this very short notice. As you all know, today is National Science Day, and I'm extremely excited to speak about this transformational acquisition of bio, Viatris's biosimilars business by Biocon Biologics to create a unique global vertically integrated biosimilars leader. And I want to emphasize the fact that this is a very, very big and huge milestone for us and a big day for India because we are trying to create the world's largest and deepest in terms of portfolio biosimilars enterprise. Let me start by giving you an overview of Biocon Biologics as it stands today. Um, let me start by saying that, um, sorry. let me start by saying that Biocon was amongst the early movers globally to pursue a high risk, high reward strategy of developing biosimilars. We took a strategic decision in the early 2000s to actually enter the niche area of biosimilars and biopharmaceuticals at a time when the regulatory pathway for biosimilars had hardly been defined. This whole sector was marked by high entry barriers of complex science, rigorous product quality, and stringent manufacturing standards and daunting regulatory challenges. However, we decided to embark on this very uh, challenging journey. And over the past two decades, we have invested in cutting edge science, advanced technology platforms and global scale manufacturing to develop biosimilar biologics that address unmet patient needs and reduce health inequities. We have built a biosimilars business driven with a sense of purpose to enable equitable access to high quality biologics and make them more affordable. Our biosimilars business has demonstrated success and established global credibility with seven of our molecules having been commercialized worldwide. Through our comprehensive biosimilars portfolio, we are serving over 3.6 million patients on a yearly basis. And in benefiting uh, patients, we have also generated revenues of $384 million in FY21. Now, biosimilars, we believe, offers a very attractive global opportunity uh, it is a class of drugs that have emerged as an effective alternative to reduce the cost of novel biologic therapies. Over 1,000 biosimilars and follow-on biologics are under development for various therapy areas. Globally, the uptake of biosimilars has increased rapidly. About 65% of all biosimilars approved in the U.S., have gained their approval between 2018 and 2019, while 58% of biosimilars in Europe were approved between 2017 to 2019, according to an ENY analysis. This trend looks to continue over the next decade. According to Equivia, the biosimilar value grew at a CAGR of 78% between 2015 and 2020, reaching approximately $18 billion in 2020, and is expected to continue to grow at a CAGR of 15% 
between 2020 and 2030, reaching an estimated $75 billion within the next decade. And I'm pleased to say that Biocon Biologics is well positioned to have a global uh, a play in a major way in biosimilars. I must remind you that we have a 40 year legacy of being on the cutting edge of science. At Biocon, our strategy has always been about bringing differentiated, high quality, affordable products with high unmet needs to patients, partners, and healthcare systems across the globe. This has led us to deploy highly efficient technology platforms to develop and manufacture fermentation derived complex APIs, uh, biosimilars that include insulins and monoclonal antibodies, as well as novel biologics. Biocon has consistently unlocked value for over four decades. And let me start by reflecting on our journey over the last four decades. Since its foundation in 1978, we have witnessed a transformational event every decade, enabling us to expand our business and unlock value across segments. However, if I were to point to two key inflection points, I would say the first was in 1998, when we bought out Unilever's stake in Biocon to become truly independent and chart out our own future. And the second is certainly today, as we script a new path at Biocon Biologics as a vertically integrated world leading biosimilars enterprise, both in terms of size and portfolio. Throughout our eventful journey, we have been creating new business opportunities and reinventing our businesses to spur our pioneering spirit. From our founding business of enzymes, we have moved to research services at Syngene, fermentation-based biopharmaceuticals, and biosimilars at Biocon Biologics. Our hallmarks of value creation and value unlocking for our shareholders began in 1989, when Unilever bought out our VC investors at a 4x multiple. In 2004, Biocon became the first biotech company to be publicly listed in India, crossing the $1 billion mark on the first day of listing. In 2007, we unlocked the value in our enzymes business through its sale to Novozymes at a very rich multiple, providing us with the capital to fuel our biopharmaceuticals business. We also witnessed a very successful IPO of Syngene, our research services company in 2015, with a billion dollar listing, thereby creating accretive value for our shareholders. Our biosimilars partnership with Viatris has been an incredible journey, wherein we embarked on a path which was unchartered given that the biosimilar regulatory pathway was not even formed in most markets. Despite this, we were able to achieve many firsts in the biosimilar space, setting new benchmarks for the industry. The complementary investments made by both the companies in R&D and manufacturing and commercialization ahead of its peers has allowed us to develop strong know-how in each of these verticals. We are ready to advance our biosimilar journey to the next level. This acquisition of Viatris's biosimilar business is an important step to create a leading, fully integrated global biosimilars company, setting us up for the next decade of value creation for all our shareholders. We expect to have an IPO of Biocon Biologics with this new entity uh, uh, structure uh, within the next two years. We have several pioneering achievements, uh, beginning with the early launch of uh, recombinant human insulin in 2004 in India, uh, biosimilar glargine in 2009, and biosimilar trastuzumab in 2014. 
In 2016, we were the first company from India to receive an approval for biosimilar GLAD gene in Japan. Our unique collaboration with Viatris, which began more than a decade ago, was defined, uh, 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 has led to achieving many firsts. Globally, we were the first to launch peg, biosimilar peg fill grastim in the US in 2018 and the first to get approval for biosimilar trastuzumab in 2017. In 2021, our biosimilar GLAD gene received a historic US approval as the first interchangeable biosimilar under the 351K regulatory pathway. The acquisition of Viatris's biosimilar business across developed and emerging markets will make bio, uh, Biocon Biologics a unique global vertically integrated biosimilars leader. The complementary investments made by Biocon Biologics and Viatris in R&D manufacturing and commercialization has given us a, a, a leading edge. Now, let me share the strong strategic rationale for this acquisition. Through this transaction, Biocon Biologics is acquiring Viatris's global biosimilars business, whose revenues are estimated to be in excess of USD billion dollars next year. This deal will give us full ownership of Viatris's rights in biosimilar assets including in-license assets, enabling us to recognize combined revenues and profits. By integrating Viatris's portfolio, Biocon Biologics will have one of the broadest and deepest commercialized biosimilars portfolio in the industry. This transaction will accelerate our direct commercialization strategy for our current biosimilars portfolio. It will also make us future ready for the next wave of products. The acquisition of Viatris's robust commercial engine in the developed markets of US and Europe will also fast track our journey of building a strong global brand. Additionally, this strategic combination will prepare us for the next decade of value creation for all, all our stakeholders through an IPO which is being planned within the next 18 to 24 months. Overall, we believe the deal will be value accretive to Biocon and Biocon Biologics shareholders. As a part of this deal, we are acquiring Viatris's global biosimilars business, which is estimated to be in excess of $1 billion in revenue next year. Post closure of this deal, Biocon Biologics will realize the full revenue and associated profits from its partner products, which is a step up from the existing arrangement of realizing a smaller fraction of the economic benefits of this partnership. It will thus expand our EBITDA base and strengthen overall financials, enabling us to invest in sustained long-term growth. We have consistently focused on the importance of vertical integration in the biosimilars industry to be agile and competitive. Thus far, we relied on the complementary capabilities of Viatris and Biocon Biologics to provide vertical integration. As the biosimilar industry matures, a fully integrated model will become increasingly important for companies to drive sustainable growth. This acquisition now enables Biocon Biologics to be a standalone, vertically integrated organization and fills the gaps in our missing capabilities in developed markets, especially around supply chain and commercialization. Our long-standing relationship with Viatris positions us very well to seamlessly and rapidly integrate and thereby maximize value from this transaction. Additionally, it accelerates our readiness for the next wave of biosimilars under development. This deal provides several advantages. 
it strengthens our financial profile allowing us to make continued investments in r and d expand global scale manufacturing capacity and capability and widen geographical reach it will enable us to realize commercial regulatory and ip capabilities in developed markets as well as operational efficiencies assemble a comprehensive portfolio comprising our current range of commercialized insulins oncology and immunology biosimilars as well as several other biosimilar assets currently under development by bringing together the complementary capabilities and strengths of both partners this deal prepares us to unlock significant value for all our stakeholders so when it comes to the full ownership of our partnered biosimilars portfolio including in licensed assets it includes a comprehensive biosimilars insulin portfolio of recombinant human insulin biosimilar glargine and aspart a growing biosimilar oncology portfolio that includes biosimilar trastuzumab biosimilar pegfilgrastim and biosimilar bevacizumab a significant presence in auto in the autoimmune segment through in licensed products by viatris like adalimumab and eternacept an additional value add comes from biosimilar aflibercept or ilia on which we have an option and a payment obligation by fy25 this is an asset that is part of this deal and we have it has the potential to be a first to market product since it also is the first to file the deal will create a comprehensive product portfolio biocon biologics currently has a portfolio of 20 biosimilars and the acquisition of biosimilar assets of biatris will provide significant potential for growth in all the disease segments that we are serving it also prepares us for greater success with the commercialization of our future pipeline this transaction will certainly enhance our geographical reach combining biatris's biosimilar business with biocon biologics accelerates the build out of our commercial cap capability in developed markets to become a strong global brand with a direct presence in the us europe canada japan australia and new zealand we are confident that this deal will drive immense value for our shareholders as it will strengthen biocon biologics financial profile enable biocon biologics to continue investing for sustained long term growth be value accretive to both biocon and biologics shareholders maximize value for patients and other stakeholders globally and of course prepare us for greater success with the commercialization of our present and future pipelines this transaction has been structured as part cash and part equity Viatris will receive up to 3.335 billion in cash and stock, and the breakup of the consideration is as follows: Viatris will receive cash consideration of two billion on closing of the transaction, to which there will be an adjustment of 50 million on account of certain capex-related funding. Upon closing of the transaction, Biocon Biologics will issue one billion dollars of compulsory. convertible preference shares to viatris equivalent to a fully diluted equity stake of at least 12.9% with a cap to the total number of shares being issued there is additional deferred consideration of 335 million due in fy25 of which 175 million dollars is linked to the option to acquire biosimilar aflibercept Viatris will designate Mr. Rajiv Malik to serve on the Biocon Biologics board. The cash payment of two billion dollars will be funded through a combination of equity infusion in Biocon Biologics as well as debt. 
we have already received commitments of 800 million dollars of equity investments and 1.8 billion dollars of debt financing allowing us to comfortably fund this transaction the future considerations will be primarily funded from the cash generated in the business the debt assumed in this transaction will be well supported by the larger EBITDA base, a combination of Biocon Biologics, Biotris, and vaccine income streams and future equity infusions, including at the IPO. The deal has been structured to ensure a seamless transition. Biotris will provide transition services for two years, in, uh, ensuring continued uh, services to patients and customers. The transaction is expected to close in the second half of 2022. Minimal overlap of roles in the two organizations due to complementary nature of the teams will make the integration process seamless. I will continue as the executive chairperson of Biocon Biologics and Mr. Rajiv Malik will be designated by Viatris to serve on the board of Biocon Biologics. We are confident that this deal will make us future ready by creating a fully integrated global biosimilars company with global scale and reach, strengthens our commercial presence in both developed and emerging markets. It builds a comprehensive portfolio of biosimilars and vaccines with a clear growth path in the near to medium term, expanding our large scale biologics manufacturing with end to end capabilities, building the organization of the future with under the stewardship of a highly experienced management team. And it enables us to continue investing for the for long term growth on the back of robust financials. We believe that this is a deal which I think is extremely transformational for Biocon. It is a deal that is very value accretive in every sense of the word, both for the business and for our shareholders. And we believe that the combined business realization of what Biocon Biologics has today and what we will acquire from Viatris is significant. It is a value accretive and it is going to create immense uh, upside for our shareholders. So with that, I would like to open it up to question and answers. Yeah, thank you, Kiran. Uh, this landmark acquisition is actually going to put BBL on the path of yet another value creation journey. Uh, we will, as we move on to the q and I would like to remind all the participants that uh, uh, if you uh, wish to ask a question, please select uh, raise hand option under the reactions tab on your Zoom application. Please announce your publication name before asking the question. For TV channels, since you are recording, uh, we would uh, request you to limit your questions to three. Uh, for all the others, limit your questions to two. And if you have more questions, please rejoin the queue so that everyone gets an opportunity to ask questions. And with that, Randhir, uh, can we take the first question, please? Sure, ma'am. Uh, we have the first question from Nisha Puddar. Nisha, if you can please unmute yourself. Yes, hi. Thanks, Randhir. Thanks, Seema. And um, many congratulations, uh, Kiran, for this large transaction. Uh, now the market is concerned. The stock is over 7.5% down. What is it that the market is really not understanding, Kiran? You are achieving scale and size in the biosimilars business by acquiring the global assets of Myelin, erstwhile Myelin. And on the other hand, you're also looking at the upgrade in terms of the valuation of your own biologics business. So can you give us a sense on the valuation of Biocon Biologics as part of this merger process in the first step and the uh, ensuing uh, fundraising that is going to take place? Can you give us more details on that? Because we had reported that Serum Institute is going to pump in over $200, $300 million more in this transaction. Well, Nisha, uh, let me answer your question by saying that, yes, the market does need to understand the magnitude of this deal. 
I think this is a transformational deal and this is a deal that creates the largest biosimilars company or one of the largest biosimilars company for sure in the world. And I think this is a very proud moment for us uh, as an Indian company. And I think the market needs to understand that this is a, a very well thought out uh, acquisition, which we can well support in terms of both funding and the business prospects. So if you look at what we are acquiring, we are actually acquiring at the first level uh, the complete economic benefits of what uh, our partner programs currently have. And that itself is a huge value add to our current business. Secondly, I think it also uh, adds to us some in-licensed assets and the complete economic benefits of some of these uh, in-licensed assets. As you know, Adilimumab and Aflibercept in the US are going to be very large opportunities. And these are opportunities that are going to start rolling out from 2023. So I think these are hugely value accretive to our business. And if we had not, if, if this deal had not been transacted, obviously we would not be a huge beneficiary of the complete economic benefit of these two events. The third thing is that we are obviously also going, uh, we've already seen that at the last uh, uh, round of funding, we, uh, the biologics business was uh, valued at uh, $4.9 billion. And certainly with this new, uh, you know, 12.9% uh, stake that, uh, uh, you know, uh, Viatris is going to uh, uh, obtain, uh, the, the value of this business already jumps up to close to $8 billion. Hmm. And obviously, we expect the IPO to be hmm. at a very, very attractive uh, level. So if you look at it, it's going to be hugely value accretive for shareholders. And this is well, uh, you know, sort of supported by a very strong uh, growth that we see in this business going forward. So what we are currently seeing is a, a, uh, a, a, an assessment of this business next calendar year, which Biocon Biologics has estimated to be $1.1 billion in revenue and $250 million in EBITDA. But going forward, I think it is going to be much higher because this is only a base level uh, that we are seeing at tw in 2023. As you know, this mm -hmm. deal is going to be uh, completed only in the second half of this, this uh, calendar year. So the value capture that we get from the Viatris acquisition will only be half of uh, FY23 fiscal. But when you look mm -hmm. at FY24 fiscal, obviously it will be a huge jump up because I mentioned that the 1.1 billion and 250 million dollars is a calendar year forecast based on what has been projected by uh, from the numbers that we can see from Viatris. But we believe that this is going to be an even more attractive, uh, you know, set of numbers going forward. And from FY25 onwards, we believe that there's going to be a sharp increase given the launch of Adilimumab and Aflibercept in the U.S. market. So we are very comfortable with the debt we are taking on. Although as an entrepreneur, I've been a bit debt uh, averse. Uh, I can tell you that the, that the debt that we're taking on is very comfortable. Between the, uh, between the infusion of, uh, of equity and the kind of debt we're taking on, I think we will be very, and the kind of business that we are, supporting which will generate the kind of cash needs we have we can easily service this debt so we believe that the payback for us will be within five years right uh, so kiran um, uh, you know the street is a little uh, you know apprehensive about the debt that you're taking 1.2 billion dollars added to already existing debt on the business now the second aspect you mentioned about 4.9 billion dollar the last fundraise amount for biologics business, it gets ramped up by way of this particular merger. 
Uh, you also said that expression of interest has come from some of your existing investors. I asked you about Serum as well as some of the other private equity investors who have invested in Biocon Biologics. Are they agreeable to a higher valuation uh, in this particular merged entity? By when can you expect the next fundraising, which will ease off your debt equity levels a little? And the IPO valuation that you're targeting, what I did gather from my sources in the market was around 15, 16 billion dollars. Well, Nisha, I can't get into those specifics. It's too speculative at this stage. But all I can tell you is that the expression of interest is at a higher uh, valuation level. And all I can say to you is that, look, you keep talking about a high debt level. It is a very, very manageable debt level compared to any other company that has leveraged its, uh, its, its acquisitions. I think we have been very, very conservative, if I may say so, in terms of our equity, of our debt raise. And I think we are very committed to making sure that, that and confident, not just committed, but we are very confident that the present level of debt will certainly come down uh, uh, even beyond what it is today. But I think even at today's level, we are very comfortable to pay off this debt very, very soon. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Nisha. Uh, we'll move on to Ekta. Rindir, can you unmute her, please? Yeah. Hi, uh, Ms. Shaw. Congratulations on what is a landmark deal in the biosimilar space. Uh, you know, you address the debt concerns, but there was one particular concern, and that's probably weighing as well, is the fact that the valuations of the deal have come in at around 16.7 times EBITDA, CY22. And this is versus uh, valuations of around six to seven times Viatris. So can you give us a sense in terms of how exactly did you come to the valuations and uh, uh, the rationale behind it? So Ekta, thanks for that question. First and foremost, uh, I think one of the things you must understand is that the biosimilars business is a very richly valued business across mm -hmm. the world. And if you look at all the Asian entities and how they are valued, they are at huge multiples because of the growth potential that this, that this segment, segment offers. And I think Biocon is now in that league because we uh, actually happen to be one of the most unique and differentiated companies when it comes to a fully vertically integrated biosimilars company uh, going forward. And that's why we believe that we will enjoy very attractive multiples uh, in, in, in line with what our peers are enjoying uh, in, 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 the, in, in, in this part of the world. Secondly, I think you must understand that Viatris's own biosimilars business was merged with the rest of their generics business. So I think it, it, it was good to basically, uh, you know, capture that value of this business and take it out and merge it with Biocon Biologics and create this hugely valuable uh, standalone vertically integrated entity. So I think it was a win-win from both companies' point of view. And I think this valuation that we have ascribed is, I think, a very fair valuation given the kind of investments that both partners have made. Remember, Viatris has made huge investments in this business as well. And so I think the kind of return we are giving them is very fair. The kind of uh, uh, benefits we are gaining from the economic benefits that uh, we will now enjoy from this business is also very fair. So I think it's a win-win for both companies. Okay. Just one additional follow-up, Ms. Shaw, and I know there's a long line of people waiting, uh, but what is the structure of Biocon now? Because uh, you are planning to reduce your holding in Biocon Biologics to around 65%. Uh, what would the eventual structure of Biocon as a company look like? Biocon will eventually be a holding company. You're, you'll hold 65% in Biologic, 70% in Syngene. Give us a sense in terms of what the structure and overall entity of Biocon will look like once you hit the markets with the IPO. Well, you know, Biocon has always meant to be a company that would have, uh, you know, a, a broad offering of uh, businesses. And therefore, I think investors and shareholders have to benefit from the sum of parts business uh, because it has such differentiated businesses. So you have biologics, 
on one hand, which is the biosimilars business, and you have Syngene as the research services business, and Biocon itself through, bio, uh, through its own uh, you know, subsidiaries of Biocon Pharma is, also has generics businesses. So in effect, I think Biocon offers a menu of uh, businesses. It's, it's a diversified portfolio of businesses, which makes it very attractive, very uh, risk balanced, and, and multiple choices. So I think from that point of view, we are giving you a company that is really a very diversified company in that sense. And then, of course, we are also creating options for investors to further invest in these separate entities, whether it is research services or biosimilars. And we think that this is a model that will allow us to keep basically creating long-term sustainable, sustainable value for shareholders, both at the biocon level and at the, at the entity level. Okay, I'll, I'll come back in the queue for more questions. Thanks. Thank you, Ekta. Uh, we will now move on to Pankaj Pradhar from ET now. Hi, ma'am. Can you hear me? Yeah. Most of this uh, underweight is coming from... Can you please mute the others because there are some other... Right. Uh, so let's uh, start. Uh, and, uh, you know, can you just talk to us about the commercial angle around the world that this particular deal will provide Biocon with? What is the sort of, what is the sort of deal that you would uh, look at? So basically, Pankaj, as you know, uh, one of the key driving, uh, you know, rationales of doing this deal was to make sure that we have a commercial front end for developed markets. Thus far, Biocon was present in emerging markets. And as you know, we already had plans in place to start building a commercial engine for developed markets for our future pi uh, pipeline of products. But this deal actually accelerates and leapfrogs us into the commercial space in developed markets. Uh, which uh, is actually a very smart way of doing it because I think Beatrice already has a running engine which we need to seamlessly now transfer to uh, Biocon Biologics over the next two years. So we believe that this is a very risk-free model of really creating that uh, commercial engine, which otherwise would have taken us a lot of time. And, uh, you know, we would have had to have a lot of knowledge building in the process. This actually allows us to leapfrog into the commercial space. Right. Uh so, you know, this gives you a very big size as far as the overall space is concerned. But can you just tell us that uh, what uh, will the portfolio of Biocon Biosimilars look after this integration? So, like I mentioned in my presentation, we currently have seven of our molecules in global markets, you know. And yeah, I was told have... earlier that. Nah. Pardon? Sorry? Sorry? Pankaj, you said something? Anyway, we have already seven molecules in the ma global markets and we have a, uh, an, an additional uh, 14 molecules that will actually, 14 molecules that will actually are under development, many of which which will come into it long term. I think uh, Pankaj, you are making faces. I don't know what is happening, but uh, <laughs> I hope I've answered your questions. I actually could not hear you, that's why. Uh, anyways, let's go to the next uh, part. Uh, you know, when we just look at this deal, how does size give operating leverage uh, to, uh, you know, the company? Uh, when you operate at this size, what sort of negotiation powers you get? What sort of launching powers you get? Distribution, marketing, how does it actually come down? So you, as you can understand, the big advantage that Biocon Biologics has over many of its competition is that we are a fully integrated end-to-end -end play. Many of the other companies have to rely on outsourced manufacturing and outsourced R&D. Whereas in this case, we actually do everything in-house, end-to-end. And we've already created the global scale that you need to be operationally efficient and cost competitive. So we believe that now playing in the global markets with everything in place gives you that advantage 
of basically uh, you know being a, uh, able to negotiate bigger deals right, right. ma'am ma when look company has biocon has always taken a leap ahead in terms of investing in biologics and now others are following now with this big acquisition even if others come out with new launches they do their own r and d how will biocon have a step ahead in this market versus some of the others despite the advantage of uh, coming in first uh, into this into this area well as you know this is not a very simple business i mean this is a very complex business that takes a lot of learning uh, the complexities of not just r and d and manufacturing but marketing itself it's early days yet for biosimilars so early movers have a very large uh, you know uh, advantage and as you know biocon and biatris have been early movers so i think this now positions us as an early mover and we need to strengthen up our position and make sure that we continue to have this lead over others just the last question just the last question i wanted to understand that biologics uh, for biocon has always you know you've gone ahead and raised funds via various entities you've got in a strategic partner now with this acquisition what sort of fundraising will you look at will it only be debt or can it also involve some dilution I think I mentioned in my presentation that it will be a mix of debt and equity. So I think it is going to look debt, equity, and of course IPO. So I think if you look at all these three, I think it's going to be uh, you know a, a, a very interesting uh, business opportunity and a very comfortable uh, financial uh, you know um, a, a comfortable uh, aspect in terms of financing the deal. So I think overall. the business itself is going to throw off a lot of cash and that itself will also help us to uh, get a faster payback but in addition in the short term obviously we would like to raise debt uh, and equity uh, to finance this deal thank you ma'am congratulations on the the deal and hope once the deal is completed you'll be able uh, to once again join us after the entire process on that note we're taking a break coming back quickly stay Thank you, Pankaj. We now move on to Sanjeet Mangat from Bloomberg Quint. Yeah, good afternoon, Mr. Shaw. Uh, uh, congratulations on the deal. Uh, my uh, first question is on the uh, leverage that you are taking on. Uh, what is the kind of contribution that Biocon would be uh, uh, putting in into Biocon Biologics? So when you said that shareholders will be infusing a nearly eight million, eight hundred million dollars of equity, how much will be your comp contribution, and how will Biocon be raising that kind of funds? So I think Biocon and other shareholders will be infusing equity into uh, Biocon Biologics. and we have everything worked out in terms of how we will be addressing that particular capital raise uh, we are well placed to make this investment on biocon's uh, behalf but i would not like to really get into specifics of uh, the the uh, fundraise of how to get there we have adequate financing in place and as i said this uh, whole uh, fundraise is going to be both biocon and existing shareholders if that is the case uh, you know if will it be a rights issue kind of thing uh, into biocon biologic and if it is a rights issue then you will your contribution would be somewhere around 65 odd percent of that entire fund raise which is going to come in so you know the street is little uh, uh, you know street need to know about you know what is the kind of uh, uh, debt that biocon would be taking up uh, to uh, infuse equity into biocon biologic so please understand that uh, right now the uh, debt is being taken on by biocon biologics okay no, i'm talking about the equity financing debt which biocon has to take to uh, infuse into biocon biologics yeah so i don't think uh, that is something that uh, is going to strain biocon's uh, ability to take on any kind of debt to uh, you know to invest or infuse equity so i don't think that that's going to be an issue for biocon the hmm. even if we have to take a debt it's not going to be significant uh but all i can say is that biocon is well placed at the moment to actually infuse that capital into uh, biocon biologics including its current uh, uh you know um, uh, loan that it has actually provided to biocon biologics which has, which it has a chance to convert
So, Ajit, if that was your last question, then we'll move on to the next person. Uh, next in line is Anju Gangude from Script. Yeah, uh, congratulations, ma'am, and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just a couple of questions. So, uh, you mentioned, you know, the Humaira and Idea opportunity, and we know that Humaira is the biggest LOA event in the history of biosims. So, uh, can you provide, a, you know, a kind of broader outlook on what we can expect? Uh, also, because Hulio is al already launched in some markets, and what is the reason for the carve out of Ilia? Uh, that's the first question. And the second, if if you can share some uh, basic inputs on, you know, the people and plant numbers that are coming in via the deal. Thank you. So let me answer your second question first. I think you must understand that the only uh, people count that are going to be added to uh, Biocon Biologics is the commercial team. Uh, please understand that R&D and manufacturing are already part of Biocon Biologics. So that does not get added from that side. Please understand that there's no plant addition from, uh, by, uh, from Viatris because they don't participate in that even today. Okay, so the main numbers that are going to come in is in terms of the commercial teams uh, that they have in place, both in advanced markets and in some of the emerging markets. The second question uh, is, um, uh, you know, around the uh, idea and uh, Humira launches. Obviously, Humira is a big launch and al we already market Humira in Europe, as you know. And obviously, like you very rightly said, uh, the Humira launch in US is going to be a very large opportunity for us. And we will be focusing on that as, uh, you know, as an important event to make it a very successful launch, because that will also significantly add to our numbers going forward. As far as ILEA is concerned, uh, the option agreement really relates to some of the uh, pending due diligence that we need to do. Uh, uh, post signing. So this is something that will happen in the very near future. And that is why we've kept it as an option agreement, because uh, I think Viatris was keen to get the signing out of the way uh, and not share too many of the uh, uh, confidential elements of uh, the idea deal, uh, both in terms of, uh, you know, the IP and other aspect uh, litigation and other uh, market formation uh, assessment that they have done and so we need to do that due diligence uh, and, and then exercise our option. Uh, needless to say that we don't expect any surprises so this we believe is an important uh, part of the deal which we will exercise in all probability our option. Thank you so much. Thanks Anju. We now move on to Isha Trivedi from ET Prime. Hello, ma'am. Uh, congratulations. This is truly a landmark deal. And uh, I think one of my questions was in, on, on the lines of what Anju asked that, you know, how many uh, people do we get on board just from the commercial side? But if you could just give a number that these are the number of new people coming on board. I can't give you an exact number, but suffice to say that the entire team at, uh, at uh, Viatris who is dedicated to biosimilars will obviously move to us. And okay. And, and that's the kind of uh, arrangement we have at the moment. So, you know, they have very dedicated teams for oncology, for immunology, for market access, and all those uh, members of those teams will obviously move to us. Right. Uh, just for my understanding, uh, obviously there are so many, uh, so many big, uh, you know, molecules which have already, you know, been disclosed. But uh, did uh, Beatrice also do any kind of their own R&D and there are some kind of assets which are there in the pipeline that you may also get access to uh, just to get a clarity on that? You know, I can't give you all the optics. Suffice to say that whatever has been disclosed has been disclosed. Hmm. And whatever is not disclosed, we can't disclose. Yeah, so I don't want the names of the molecules, but just wanted to understand whether they did have something that they, uh, you know, they did their own R&D in something or not. In the in the biosimilar space, no, they have they have not done any of their own R and D. Hmm. Okay, great. Uh, I think a lot of my questions were answered, so uh, we'll you know connect again if there is something which is missing. Thank you so much and congrats. Thanks. Yeah.
Thank you, Isha. We move on to E. Kumar Sharma from FE now. Yeah. Uh, hello. Uh, congratulations for, on all the, I think, important steps in this. And all the important questions, in fact, have been asked by my colleagues. And I don't, I have something very basic to ask. This has been one of the biggest deals for Biocon, actually. And, uh, how much time did it take from the time you began, actually? Some sense of, you know, how, how much it has taken. And a simple question is, uh, as, as the, the way you see this, uh, the trends in the biosimilars market prices, actually, the price of biosimilars, the, the trends that you see, in the context of that, how do you look at the recovery that, and in the interim, the, uh, the impact, if at all, uh, on, the, on the capex, if, if there's anything that you could throw some light on. And perhaps uh, linked with this is the getting into the mind space of the physicians there in, 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 uh, in markets abroad, if there is anything that you can perhaps throw some light on, that's enough. Thanks so much. Yeah, so Kumar, uh, as you know, most of the CapEx spends have been put into place because of the kind of investments we've been making over the last several years. So I think we have created the necessary uh, manufacturing infrastructure to address the large market opportunities that we see in, in biosimilars. So from that point of view, I think uh, we are well set to address these very large opportunities. In terms of uh, mindshare, obviously Viatris is the front end uh, you know, commercial engine at the moment because they are the ones who own the, the market authorizations. But having said that, it's the brands that uh, really need to be positioned. The brands are now becoming a very familiar in many of the global markets and in fact, in the most important advanced markets of US and Europe. So we just basically take over uh, the commercial engine and make sure that we keep expanding uh, the, the brands uh, in these markets. So from our point of view, I think it's going to be a seamless effort, but more exciting is the opportunity of using these commercial engines for our future products. And that's what is important. I think people need to understand that we had planned to anyway be a front-facing company over the next several years. This only accelerates that process and actually makes us far more ready uh, to basically market our future products with far greater confidence than trying to basically, you know, build it out in a way where we would have had to reinvent the wheel. Any sense on the time that it took? I'm just curious. This is one of the biggest deals. Well, for it actually did not take a very long time. I mean, I think these discussions began uh, about... Uh, close to six months ago, maybe about five or six months ago. And we've done it very, very rapidly. Okay. Congratulations. Thanks so much. Thank you, uh, Kumar. Uh, we now move on to uh, Vishwanath Pilla from ET. Uh, hello. Uh, Mishra, congratulations on this uh, I mean, mega deal on biosimilars, uh, I mean, area. And uh, my question is that uh, currently Viatris is doing the front end in the highly regulated markets. Uh, since you are taking over, I mean, that business, like what are the things that you've analyzed? Like what can you do, in fact, better to expand the market or, you know, in fact, do much better than what is currently done? I think in all fairness, Viatris is doing a good job. I think uh, if you look at interchangeable Glargine, it has had a huge uptick in the last few months, ever since it uh, gained the interchangeable label. We are now over the 10% mark in terms of market share. And I do believe that now with the two companies coming together, we will look at being more aggressive and we will try and seek greater market share. But having said that, they have a very strong commercial engine, which we together will strengthen even further, given that we are also looking at some very interesting large opportunities next year. Thank you. 